Continue a few more deep rounds of breathing. Observe your breath. Focus on your breathing. Now gently join your both the palms together. Adab Namaskar Mudra in front of your chest. Now we'll go for three rounds of Omkara before we start this session. First round, inhale deeply. Uh, Observe the vibrations of Omkara flowing through your body. Feel the resonance in your body. And with the relaxed state and presence of your mind in present state, slowly and gently rub your both the palms together. Then make a cup of your palms and place them on your eyes, on your face. And slowly and gently with a few blinks, slowly open your eyes and watch your palms. Hari Om. Namaste everyone. Good evening. Today's session we mostly speak about pranayama. So as we are talking here about traditional way, most of the traditions like traditional yoga scriptures talks about sequence as in Raja Yoga, mostly in Patanjali Yoga Sutra, which talks about Ashtanga Yoga, where the sequence starts with Yama, Niyama, then Asana, then Pranayama, then Pratyahara, then Dharana, Dhyana, and Samadhi. The same way the Hatha Yoga goes with the Asana, then Shatkarma and Pranayama, then Mudra Bandha, then goes to Samadhi. Like this, each and every text or yoga guru follows the sequence, which is a traditional way. So yesterday we finished asana. So there is a quite saying in yogic scriptures that before you enter into prana or entering into pranic level or regulating the prana, first try to control the grosser level of your body. That is your physical body. I meant here the physical body. So we finished the asana yesterday. What all the things, what exactly is a yoga asana? What exactly? is a yoga asana, not just asana, yoga asana and how we practice that, what all the things we have to do and what we should not do in a teaching field of yoga or the practice also. So I hope everyone understood that and now we will be shifting to pranayama, right? So first, what is meant by pranayama? The term pranayama, what does it mean? Prana. Pranayama means prana plus ayama. There are two words in there. Prana yes. means uh, vital force, energy, prana. Ayama means uh, it is a uh, regulation of the uh, um, control. Good. Quite near. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Narsegar. Thank you so much. So, as the sir said, prana and ayama. I will come back there. Before that, the pranayama, the basic term of pranayama is mostly defined as the breath control. The breath control. But this interception may be correct because the practices we do, we normally generally we involve the controlling of our breath. But it does not convey the full meaning. So as Narsegaru said, the term pranayama has two root words. One is prana. The other one is Ayama. So what is meant by prana? The scriptures talks, our yogi says the prana is something which exists in everything. As yesterday I told you, it exists in the living organism and non-living things, animated and inanimated things, the prana. So it is the vital energy, the most important vital energy or in common term, we can say the life force. That what the prana means. The if we convert into the English translation, it is the force which exists in all the things, 
whether animate, whether inanimate, whatever it be. So the pranayama should not be considered mere breathing exercises, but also it. They say, okay, before that, they say, okay, doing pranayama is mostly for lung capacity, increasing lung capacity or absorption of oxygen more. No, there is much more further in pranayama, which we see. So the pranayama, what it does, it utilizes breathing influence, the flow of prana in the nadis, as yesterday I told you, in the nadis or the energy channels, which we have in our body, or we can say, the pranic flow in the pranamaya kosha. So you are familiar with the pranamaya kosha, right? Annamaya kosha, pranamaya kosha, manomaya kosha, the pancha koshas, right? So in the pranic level, that is the pranic level body, energy body, we say. That level is called as energy body, the pranamaya kosha. So in that the pranic flow, it helps, the pranayama helps to do these things. So that is what is prana. Then when the second root, that is ayama, there are two actually, one is prana and yama, one is prana plus ayama. If we say prana plus yama, yama means restricting or restraining, can be say controlling. But when you use the term ayama, when you use the term ayama, that means expansion extension so when you extend or when you expand the pranic level in your body expand the prana energy towards your body is also considered as pranayama so the thus word pranayama means extension or expansion of the dimension of prana then the techniques of pranayama provide the method whereby the life forces can be activated and regulated in order to go beyond one's normal boundaries or limitations, we can say, but the most to attain the highest state of vibratory energy. And most important thing, never forget in yogic practice, the awareness. So in these techniques, what according to which we say, the techniques of pranayama, that means we regulate we expand the life force in our body. We're not just in the physical form till the mental level, till the cellular level, it works. All these things will be expanded. Then according to scriptures, according to PYS, the Patanjali Yoga Sutra, Sage Patanjali says that pranayama is cessation of the movement of inhalation and exhalation. The term here he used the cessation means stopping. Understand the stop. So Sage Patanjali says in a quite great manner, like interesting manner, he says that pranayama is not where you inhale deeply or where you exhale completely. Pranayama is where you know to stop the breath. That is in other language or in our common Sanskrit word, we use kumbhaka. Understand? So pranayama is not just deep breathing. Similarly, it doesn't mean that only restraining the breath or for a longer time at once doesn't mean pranayama also. Understand? Don't think that just deep breathing and exhaling is not pranayama. And he says that restraining is pranayama. It doesn't mean that only just restraining the prana or the breath doesn't mean pranayama. That means when the breath is controlled, so as to remind the breath. The breath has to be controlled and it has to remain at a state when you stop it. Will further you will understand more this thing. It is said that prana is like a wild elephant. You know the wild elephant, right? Mother Mekina Gajamu in Telugu we say. Yeah, the wild elephant, it's like a wild elephant. Can you control the wild elephant? Can you tame it? How hard it is to tame a wild elephant? Same he says. Taming the prana, controlling the prana is nothing but, but equal to taming a wild elephant. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of patience and it takes a lot of care to tame a wild elephant. In the same way, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of patience with a lot of care. 
if you practice the pranayama then and there you can control the prana or you can regulate the prana he says very quite interestingly h patanjali in patanjali yoga sutra so that's why if you want to tame the prana you will have to take as much as care you would while taming a wild elephant so it doesn't mean that hey now you have to bend to me or no, the elephant will beat you with this trunk and you will be fallen away far away you don't even know where you will be even you don't even know you will be alive the same manner if you force it the prana won't listen to you you have to care it you have to show some kind of love to the prana oh prana please listen to me come into my control let's be together we will join with each other you show some love you so you show some passion towards the prana then it will be under your control it will be in your grip that's how the prana works in your body that's how it happens then there must be the steadiness and patience it not like chanchala with the chanchala bhav of your mind you go and you will try now ah, okay i love you prana you be with me then later again you say you forget the prana and you go somewhere oh i love you asana you go near asana and you leave prana then the prana won't come near you it won't come either stick to one be steady with the prana be with there and hold to the prana then you will enjoy it then it will also support you that's how you both go in the same manner and i feel that where comes the harmony then the prana will regulated in your body always remember there are some things which you need to understand when you are regulating prana or when you are practicing prana if you are doing any withdraw if you are having any drawbacks either physically or mentally please avoid the pranayama practice there itself for days even for months don't do why sir pranayama it helps a lot for us by doing pranayama it is very good for us then why we should stop this is mostly concerned for those who are considered as sadhakas those who are considered themselves as sadhakas those who are into the spiritual path should avoid if they are having any withdraws through mental or physical level they have to withdraw the practices like this then also they have to consider the atmospheric conditions food habit okay take note note these points atmospheric conditions you mean the surrounding environment how is it the food habits second the age factor third physical condition fourth these are the main and many other factors which has to be considered before practice before beginning the practice you have to consider all these things okay these things you have to keep in your mind so when you begin the practice okay finally you have considered all these factors and you are fit for them i'll tell you what all the factors which you have to take later now you are going to begin the practice so why do you do the pranayama what is the reason you do pranayama to so breathe inhale and exhale it normally happens it's quite common you inhale you exhale even without your known or even without your awareness inhale and exhalation happens then why we should do pranayama what is the ultimate goal of pranayama the ultimate goal of pranayama is to attain the retention we think that kumbhaka the retention is something very easy no nope. i'll come to there why so there are three types in pranayama one is puraka three types of pranayama please note it down one is puraka the second one is rechaka and the third one is kumbhaka and actually there is another state fourth one is also there that is called kevala kumbhaka so puraka is something you know when you inhale the inhalation when the air goes into your body through your nostrils is puraka and the rechaka is nothing but expiration or exhalation when the air flow goes out through your nostril away from your body and there comes the kumbhaka the retention of breath that where it comes it is also two part two types antar kumbhaka and bahya kumbhaka where you retain the breath inside and where you retain the breath outside next kevala kumbhaka 
is something called natural cessation. There is no exact uh, translation into the English as English is not that describable for our Sanskrit words. But up to the mark, we can say the natural state of cessation of breath or retention of breath is considered as Keval Kumbhatka, which can't be described, which only can be experienced. Then, so yes, you got to understand the inhalation, you got to know exhalation, you got to know retention. So now the most important thing comes according the traditional way of inhaling and exhaling or traditional way of breathing process. We say one inhalation should be considered. We use one is to two ratio, right? If you inhale for five seconds, then you exhale for 10 seconds. So double the exhalation. Exhalation should be longer than the inhalation. So we generally in common terms, we say five seconds, 10 seconds. But there is a traditional way of breathing here. In place of one second, there is considered as one matra, eka matra, dve matra, tri matra. These matras in English term, we use the units. Matra means tapping your two fingers, index and middle finger on your knee thrice. You'll get a little bit of confusion here. So first, write it down. One matra means tapping your fingers thrice on your knees. Mood sarlu, me mokala mida, me chupud velu mali edam madhyapu velto, tap chedam, kotta damitla. Tuck, 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 thrice. This is according to Garendha Samhita. Swami Garendnath says these things. This is how. So here, 1 is to 2 ratio means, according to the traditional way, it is said, you have to inhale for 6, not 6 seconds, 6 matras. To be nearly, it says, 3 seconds is equal to 1 matra. It says, 3 seconds is equal to 1 matra. That means, 1 matra is equal to 3 seconds into 6. You calculate. So if you inhale 6 matras, then you have to exhale for 12 matras. 12 into 3 seconds. Understand? 1 matra is equal to 3 seconds into 12 times. That's how you exhale. So in the yogic way, where the beginners, how they have to practice the breathing or the pranayama. So the inhalation and exhalation is quite common. But how does it differ from the normal breathing and uh, breathing process with pranayama with retention? That means kumbhaka. So there is a ratio which to be considered. The yogis have considered that 1 is to 4 is to 2 ratio is the beginner's starting phase. That means the yogi has to start with 6 matras. Okay, is to 6 into 4, 7, 6 into 4, 24, 24, 24. 24 is to 12. That is the ratio of the beginners or of a sadhaka who starts the first. Imagine how many you can, how many of you can inhale for 6 matras. That means you have to inhale for 18 seconds in general term. Then into four, you have to hold it. Then again into, ho, oh, into two, you have to exhale it. So this is how a yogi starts. The traditional yogi starts his practice. But as we are the commoners in the modern age, we try not to go till there. In the starting level, we go with the general seconds. One, two, three, four type of seconds we use and then we go. Once you reach this state, if you can inhale for 24 seconds and you can exhale for 48 seconds, then go for the six matras into is to 24 matras of hold and then 12 matras of exhalation. Then you start to become, then you will 
become the yogi the starting phase of a yogi then i have i will tell you so how does a yogi there are three types of yogis and uh, beginners intermediate and advanced so the beginners it will be 12 is to 48 is to 24 please write down 12 is to 48 is to 24 matras remember not seconds matras okay then an intermediate practitioner 16 is to 64 is to 32 matras this is how an intermediate yogi practices the pranayama this is say the advanced yogi 20 matras is to 80 matras is to 40 matras 20 matras inhalation 80 matras of retention holding and 40 matras of exhalation this is how a yogi advanced yogi breath he always go the breathing with retention a yogi breath is includes the retention it will include the retention that's how a yogi does the breathing and how does we inhale exhale and we don't even know how we breathe the air goes in it goes out whatever it wish as usual but a yogi always be in the aware of his breathing or her breathing how much he inhale how much he exhale he know by the practice of tapping thrice for years it takes year for some it takes lives also he might not achieve in this life then they might achieve in the next life as i told you each and every yogic practice is also considered as one incarnation of 84 lakhs if he might master the inter beginner level in this life and he died before or he emerged into parampath not he can't take parampath sorry but he has died or he left his body in this world and again in the next janma if he comes he might start from the beginners not sorry not beginners the intermediate level directly because he had considered as the karmic past has been finished in the previous life of the beginners level he might directly start with the intermediate level intermediate. that's how it possesses the karmic thing works like that sanskaras pura janma sanskaras okay so this is how a yogi breath understand now once again take your notes note down most important points guidelines of breathing first preliminaries what we have as i told in the starting first one must this is only for yogis i mean the, the traditional way first one must perfect in asanas one must be perfect in asanas the heading is preliminaries preliminaries one must undergo the perfection of asanas and also one must undergo shat karmas that means in general we say kriyas jalneti sutraneti kapalabhati trataka dauti basti all these things why why one should go all these things because this helping in this helps the shat karmas will always helps in the dual level physical and pranic both one it removes the wastes from your body it removes the physical blockages and it also helps in removing the pranic blockages in your body and which helps in the free flow of prana in your whole body in the pranic level of energy body understand then the second is diet the diet should be balanced diet mostly the sattvic such as the fresh and natural fruits hatha yoga says how the food should be there better to use or better to have regional and seasonal foods so add some grains pulses fresh fruits and vegetables to your diet before you start the practicing pranayama and for vegetarians in yogic scriptures they mention you can use quite a little bit some of the dairy products like curd ghee milk and all some will uh, say restrict these things as in hatha yoga also say not to have these thing dairy products much 
but Giran Samhita and some yogic scriptures, ancient scriptures says that it's okay to have. And there are some says if you are a non-vegetarian and if you are from high cold areas, maybe you can have eggs and all. But better we will not stick to that. We'll stick to the sattvic diet only. Okay, this is how the diet should be there. Then, how at what place you have to practice? How the place should be there? It must be clean. It must be, you know, the environment must be unpolluted or minimized pollution. Pleasant, well ventilated. If you are doing in a room, the ventilation should be nice. The ventilation is compulsory when you, you do a pranayama. And avoid smoky, smelling and dusty places when you do pranayama. And the yogis also say better practice pranayama alone. Better practice pranayama alone so that you can avoid the interruptions from many other people or noise, all these things. Mostly you can avoid the interruption. Good. Next heading is cleanliness. Basically, personal cleanliness has to be there. That means, okay, it might not be possible that if you can't take full bath, but if bathing is not possible, at least wash your face, your hands, and your palms, and your legs, and your feet, minimum, before practicing pranayama. And always remember, once you finish the pranayama, don't directly take bath immediately after, okay, pranayama khatam ho gaya, pranayama finished, now in kai pendi, now I'll just rush to the bathroom and I'll take bath, ha, cool water or hot, please don't do this, avoid this. Don't directly go for bath too. At least take minimum half an hour, so that the body can come to the normal level. We don't know how changes will happen when you practice, there are various kind of practices which you do. So always remember these things. Good. Then what time for practice? Time for practice. Early morning is the best time to start a pranayama. And the yogic scriptures suggest four periods a day. For as us, we are commoners. We are not that great yogis or we are not that sadhakas as we are in the Guru Star. It is not possible to follow the four. And it says we should not do pranayama with specific restrictions when it is too sunny or too hot in the environment. But if you are a sadhak and if you are a yogi, if you are if you want to achieve the state of the yogi, then you have to follow the four periods. That is sunrise at the time of sunrise, two at time of noon, that means afternoon, three that is the sunset. And four, that is in the midnight. Remember the, the ratios which I have told what yogi practices. With that ratio, you have to practice pranayama in these times. The four times a day. In four, 24 hours, you have to practice four times. Then next comes the sequence. Always remember, as I told, pranayama should never be before everything. Pranayama should always be after the asana or any chatkarmas. Okay. So mostly it should be after asanas and before meditation practices. Remember the term meditation practices. Why I told here meditation practices, not just meditation. So that will come later. Asana uh, pranayama should be done after asana, then before meditation practices. Then the seat. That means the asanam where you sit. Mostly it should be made out of the natural fibers such as wool and like wool or cotton. Don't use the synthetic fibers as it repels or repels the negative ions and just attract the positive ions. So the more positive ions is also not good for body as it repels only the negative ions, it takes the positive ions. That is not good. So that's why use the cotton fiber which will balance your body with prana. Then how a posture should be? The posture, ability to sit comfortably in any meditative posture or in any meditative asana, which is a requisite for the successful practice of pranayama. So steady and calm and in a straight position of a meditative posture with firmness, that is nothing but you are achieved 
the first stage of successfulness in pranayama so sitting straight for a longer time is a great thing it's a great deal to be honest the body should not move forward or backward or sides or it shouldn't be crooked it should be firm and straight the chest neck and head should be in a single straight line when you sit for pranayama or when you sit in any meditative posture remember your head neck back or your head neck chest it should be in single and straight line when you sit or sit firmly that's how a meditative asana should be there which also helps to attain good more benefits in pranayama then the nostril starting nostril so according to our yogic scriptures we always start with the left nostril for example in bastrika or and in nadi shuddhi or uh, nadi shuddhi pranayama we start with the left nostril so that's how it goes because we first act we cool down then we heat then again we heat then we cool that's how it works okay so balancing but we start with the cooling if you are having any blockages in your left nostril then please it's okay to start with the right nostril that means left is blocked means your right is already active so heat it then i try to exhale through your left to cool it down then again try to inhale it from your left and exhale through your left so if you go on practice the both nostrils will be balanced that the blocked nostrils will be open the same goes if right is not uh, blocked then try with the left like that then mostly use your nose please use your nose for breathing not your mouth only there are some specific practices which you have to use mouth other than please try to use your nose and two nostrils they are quite they are the god has given them only for breathing mostly we see that we use <laughs> we if we get running after running we use mouth please don't use mouth try to use nose only and always the nostrils must be cleansed properly so we have great practices such as jalneti and sutraneti sutraneti might not be uh, prescribed for everyone but jalneti is mostly for everyone so at least do jalneti uh, you know if possible every day a week that is very good it is prescribable if you are a healthy man remember if you are with problems then please avoid it if you are a healthy quite healthy then go for a daily it is prescribable then jalneti at least once or twice a week use the uh, sutraneti sorry sutraneti once or twice a week you can give and if you are quite healthy if you are young and you can do it with no other issues back, no severe back pain no hypertension then you can go for daily sutra also that's not a big deal so that's how you keep the nostrils cleansed properly then the breathing i told you how the breathing should be there the ratio but also there are some things you uh, there are some terms which you need to keep understand them which are the breathing should be very subtle in pranayama subtle in the sense very slow very smooth breathing the practitioner should breathe in such a way that the breathing does not expand or extend beyond two width of the fingers if you keep like this ee rendu fingers daati velladu the two fingers the breath should go should not go of these two fingers it should be here only the range that slow you have to breathe now for example if you inhale my the papers are going out if you do that fast but the yogi says the breathing should be when you exhale the breath should not go beyond the width of two fingers it should be till there only that means how slow you have to breathe you understand i leave it for your imagination no it's not to need not an imagination if you practice you can achieve that state that's how the pranayama works and that's how the breathing works in pranayama so one more thing you have to keep in mind the retention so uh, okay i inhale yes slowly okay i inhale very smoothly and deeply i held the breath don't held it that much so that when you exhale you exhale like <sniffs> don't do these things even if you held till your capacity try to exhale in the same manner very slowly and very smoothly don't exhale don't bust out the air from your nostrils you are not going to die you can exhale so that's how the pranayama the regulation or the controlling means that's how you retain the breath and you release the retention these things you have to keep in mind and always remember the inhalation and exhalation should be consistent and uniform that means 
the way you inhale slowly the same way you have to exhale it's not that okay i'm exhaling slowly so that i inhale fastly no inhalation is the same how you inhale proper slow deeper same you have to exhale the proper deeper and completely and slowly it should go in a both aside both by then the ratio of inhalation exhalation and retention i have mentioned you the ratio is 1 is to 2 ratio for inhalation and exhalation the ratio with retention is 1 is to 4 is to 2 is a quite common ratio with retention that means if you add kumbhaka then how a yogi practices i told that this is how a yogi breathe but how does a yogi breathe in pranayama how does a yogi perform pranayama can anyone say it's a quite common similar to the asana a yogi does asana performing bandhas the same way yogi does the pranayama performing the bandhas understand and it's not that easy even i tried performing mula mula bandha and did Kapalabhati, uh, experience is at a different level. But a yogi does sometimes do Mahabandha and he does the pranayama. I don't know how they do, but maybe by some years of practice, sadhana, they have reached that state. So, with the bandhas doing the pranayama is how a yogi performs the pranayama. But please don't try without any guidance. Please, if you want to achieve that state, Please go and surrender near a guru who have experience. Don't, don't go everywhere that oh, I am a yoga guru. If they say and go near them and don't practice, you question them, you ask them. If you are satisfied with the answers of the guru, then only you practice under him. Don't just blindly believe and go. And they say questioning a guru is very popular. No, the guru's work is to answer whatever the shishya asks him. Remember this thing. Keep in mind then only you can get a proper guru, then under him you practice these high level or higher state of yogic practices. Then the time unit, I told you, the matras. Okay. And if you're feeling fatigue in between the practice, another thing, if you're feeling fatigue, then stop the practice. Don't do the practice. Relax. Next day you continue. Fatigue in the sense you're feeling restlessness or you're feeling very tired simply by sitting. Please avoid that. If you are undergoing any illness, not diseases, some kind of illness, please avoid the practice. If you are in pregnancy, yesterday in asana, we said there are only some practices which you have to do in pregnancy and most of the thing we have to avoid. But in pregnancy, in pranayama, pregnancy time, you can do kapalabhati. It's a very good at the time of labor. Brahma is just very, very good. Only you have to avoid is kumbhaka and uddhyana bandha while you are in while you are a pregnant lady or when you are undergoing pregnancy and don't teach kumbhaka and udhyana bandha to any pregnancy people or pregnant ladies keep in mind apart from kumbhaka and udhyana bandha she can practice up to always remember till the individual capability only if she has the capacity of to do then only she has to do okay yes the yogis prescribe that they can do practice but if she have possessed the capability, then only she should do. If not, she shouldn't do. Remember, the contraindication should always be in your mind. Who has to do, who has not to do, how much has to do, how much shouldn't do. If you know this, then no one can stop you in the yoga field. You can teach awesome. Blindly, you can teach by knowing the person. Always remember that. And always remember the side effects. They say that there is a misconception that yoga doesn't have side effects, but Yes, yoga doesn't have side effects if you do it properly, if you follow it properly. If you just misuse it, I will have chicken, mutton, highly and I will sit and I will do pranayama, then you will sit in bed. You will sleep in bed in ICU somewhere. And if you, I had tummy full and it's, oh shit, sir has told to join the class. I have to join, now I have to do pranayama, but my tummy is full. But okay, if sir will get angry, I will do pranayama. That's on you, your peristaltic movement come out, you will start to vomit. Again, you will go to ICU. So please avoid these kind of things. There are some side effects which you have to keep in mind because those are side effects are in your hand. Which you, if you want to do in a nice and proper way, then you will be happy and safe and you will enjoy the practice. If you do it restrictingly or by, you know, some pressure, if you do, then please don't do yoga itself.
that's all then regularity as i told if you love prana be with prana for a while don't go to asana prana asana prana don't do like this and don't stop the practices in between the regularity is not only just meaning with prana or asana but also we mo most commonly we do are sir to abhi bulaya nahi sir didn't called us it's okay i won't join today sir is not sir is uh, sir is so freely he won't say anything i will join day after tomorrow who will say uh, sir don't think anything don't do this kind of things if you are a practitioner then you have to determine yourself that okay this is the time i have to practice i will practice that's all nothing else nothing doing i will do the practice this is how the regularity works patanjali yoga sutra says how a sadhana should be there satudirga kala nairantarya satkara sevito drudha bhumi that means a practice should be for a longer determined and with a focused strong determination is what how a practice should be how the sadhana should go for a longer time whatever you do for a longer time then only you will achieve something it's not that you took birth and you became 25 year old years man not right you underwent 25 years you underwent 50 years to reach that level the same way to reach that state you have to undergo a long term practice there are no shortcuts remember if you use the shortcuts which comes very easily it goes very easily but which comes with full practice full determination full involvement will never leave you that easily until unless if you want to leave i hope you won't. no one will leave that if someone they work very hard and they want to leave everything what they achieve never okay so this is how a pranayama the traditional way this is how pranayama works this is how a yogi does the pranayama these are the things as a yoga practitioner we all have to keep in our mind these are all the things we have to consider when in our real life that's how yoga is not something to teach we have to implement in our lives okay there are many things many complications they say many obstacles will be in your way but try to try to minimum minimum level you try to do as i told basic don't go 12 matras go to 6 matras start in the basic level you start don't consider you, yourself as a yogi now itself and i will do that one please don't do that understand your body understand your capacity understand all those things then only go ahead don't just like directly jump without knowing the depth please don't jump until unless you are confident okay lodo delagunda dukide munipotam kada ida rakapothe that's how you learn how to do then you can jump but the basics are compulsory don't directly jump to advance start with the basic level go with the foundation lay it brick by brick brick by brick brick by brick you lay and you can build a big apartment home villa whatever you want in the pranayama stage so that's how the pranayama works okay yeah so there are pancha pranas right prana apana samana vyana udana these are the pancha pranas i will just touch it and i will go because we have to cover meditation also today i'll be talking about quite small thing about meditation only important point point so first note it down prana 